Hi, this is John Gann with Chesapeake Technology here with another one of our Did You Know videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you two examples of backscatter processing in 64-bit SonarWiz 6. This first example is using R2Sonic 2024 data acquired by HiPack and HSX files and kindly provided by our Japanese customer Nippon Mikunia. SonarWiz allows you to create amplitude or depth grids using a variety of algorithms. Now I'll create an amplitude grid using the inverse distance weighted or IDW algorithm. You can control the IDW algorithm by using the advanced settings dialog shown here. Of course you can set the grid cell size as you like and control what to do with the grid when it's completed. I've already created two IDW amplitude grid files for comparison. One was done at 50 centimeters and the other at 15 centimeters. Here is the 50 centimeter grid shown in plan view in SonarWiz. I'll zoom in on the plan view to show a bit better resolution. The grid properties dialog shows the grid's metadata, including the cell size. I'll turn off the 50 centimeter grid and show the 15 centimeter grid so you can see the enhanced resolution. Filling small gaps in the amplitude grid is one of the strengths of the IDW gridder. SonarWiz provides an area-based editing tool and you can choose to edit your data in bathymetric view or in amplitude view. You first select an area on the bathymetric surface which allows you to edit in a 3D point cloud or in a 2D projected view with X, Y, X, Z, or Y, Z projection options. You can edit the data manually or use some of the advanced automatic cleaning filters. It's easy to switch from bathymetry to amplitude and to set the color mapping accordingly. Now both the 3D and 2D views are rendering the XYZ data as before, but now the color of each point is the backscatter instead of the water depth. You can edit the data using either the amplitude or bathymetry, and the area-based editor offers a rectangle, a lasso, or a freeform pen like I'm showing here to select points for rejection. The editor also includes a full redo and undo capability. The second example of my backscatter data is from an EdgeTech 6205 sonar using the JSF data collected by EdgeTech for the Shallow Survey 2015 common data set. I've already imported and processed the 6205 bathymetry in SonarWiz and created an amplitude grid using the IDW gridder in SonarWiz. I've also imported the low frequency side scan sonar channels from the same JSF files and you can see them rendering on top of the backscatter data now. If I change the opacity on the side scan layer so you can see through it, you can immediately see the advantage of the backscatter mosaic over the side scan mosaic because of the precise positioning of each backscatter sample. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please visit our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel.